Fuck you. And I'll see you when D finally fixes secondary outburst. Right. Fucking idiot. <laughs> So this was going to be the second video that I made, but due to there being an issue with secondary outburst description, I ended up wasting a lot of time doing research just to wait for a patch. Luckily with update 34, they've actually gone through and done a bunch of quality of life changes including a bunch of fixes, so I can finally actually talk about it. So secondary outburst is an arcane that increases your critical chance and critical damage by consuming the combo multiplier that you get on your melee weapon, which is a decent buff with the 12 times multiplier that gives you 240% critical chance and critical damage but it takes quite a while to build up your combo count unless you're using a specialized setup like the dual like or incarnon now you can also use this as just a small passive buff that you get every time you equip your secondary weapon by using a weapon with initial combo counter such as the furax wraith and then combining that with corrupted charge this will give you a constant passive 60% critical chance and damage buff on your secondaries however personally if i'm going to use an arcane like this i'm going to try and maximize it because of this, I find the best way to go around it is actually to use the router, since the router can build up combo counter by just landing shots. But I was curious as to how much it actually accumulates on those shots, so I decided to run some tests. And you know what that means, I have to spend my entire weekend unloading magazines into people and finding out how much it actually generates on the combo counter, because apparently I have nothing better to do with my life. So I performed 6 tests using 20 shots each, where I would fire the shot, perform a melee attack in order to see what combo counter I'd gotten from it, wrote it down, and then I watched back the recording and counted the number of projectile hits I got per shot. I used no mods as the baseline to measure from, and that gives you 8 pellets per shot, followed by Vigilante Armaments, which gives you 60% multi-shot, bringing it up to 12.8 pellets per shot, then Hell's Chamber at 120% multi-shot, giving you 17.6, and then both of them at the same time for 180% multi-shot, equaling 22.4 pellets. I also tested punch through to see if over penetrating targets work the same way as multi shot. To do this I used seeking force which gives you plus 2.1 punch through, still with the baseline of 8 pellets. Then I tried using 180 multi shot and 2.1 punch through in order to see what it could maximise out to. So from the testing I found that the base stats with 8 pellets usually gets you about 14 combo counter per shot, however this is affected by multi shot and punch through. There does seem to be a cap on the amount of melee combo counter you can gain per shot, with it capping out at 28, which means once you go past 100% multi-shot, you're not gaining much benefit. Because of this, Galvanized Hell actually works out quite nicely for you, since it gives you 110% multi-shot. It also means that you can solo rely on punch through if you can line up your shots in order to hit your maximum combo counter quickly, with only 8 shots being required if you're able to land your full 28 melee combo counter hits using the router. Vigilante Armaments does have a weird interaction though, where sometimes it'll do 26 or 24, but on an alternating shot, it'll do 2 and 4 to your combo counter. I'm sorry, what the fuck? So just relying on Vigilante Armaments isn't enough, instead I'd recommend going with Hell's Chamber for multi-shot. So as far as the build goes, there's only 3 things on here I'd recommend. One is Viral Damage. You could also use Corrosive depending on the enemy type. This is because if you're going to be weakening up enemies with your primary in order to swap to your secondary and get that crit boost, you might as well have them take more damage while you're at it. The more important ones are Shotgun Barrage to increase your fire rate and Fractalized Reset in order to reduce your reload speed on ability cast. Since we're trying to cram 8 shots into an enemy as quickly as possible, increasing your fire rate and reducing your reload time is going to improve this build significantly. Using Shotgun Spaz increases your fire rate from 0.8 to 1.52, this brings your time between your shots down from 1.25 seconds down to 0.7 and then using Fractalized Reset increases your reload speed from 1.2 seconds down to 0.5 seconds meaning you can get out all 8 shots in 5.8 seconds which is significantly faster than doing it with melee. Now for the weird bits of data I found while I was doing my testing one, it's about the hits, not the damage. So if an arbitration drone, for instance, is blocking the damage that an enemy takes, you can still shoot them to build up your combo counter. Two, if you're not the host, then the conversion rate for your combo counter can be a little bit strange for secondary outburst. Three, the router caps out at 220 on its combo counter. So even if you go past those eight shots and build up your combo counter all the way, it won't go any higher. Now that doesn't seem important, but as I said earlier, I want to maximise this thing, and there's one melee weapon that can actually go beyond a 12 times combo counter. The Venka Prime's passive allows it to have a 13 times combo multiplier. This then combined with secondary outburst allows it to get a 260% critical chance buff. Unfortunately, because of that cap on the router's combo counter, you'll have to pull out your melee weapon in order to get the last little bit in order to fill out that 13 times melee buff. 
Once you get your 13 times multiplier though, make sure you don't shoot anyone with the router because it will reset it back to the 220 cap. Having a 260% critical chance buff allows you to bring more secondary weapons into crit viability. For instance, I enjoy using the Tenet Spyrex, which is usually quite difficult to get to crit. If I use it with the secondary outburst setup, I can get 146% crit chance with a 10.8 crit damage multiplier, which means it can actually do some pretty good numbers, like this one. Whether or not you use the Venka, there is one recommendation I have if you want to mod your melee weapon for this setup. I would recommend putting on a little bit of combo duration to give you some more time in order to be able to balance out the router's combo counter. This can also be achieved by using Naramon if you don't want to do it with mods. If you have it too short, then when you reload, if you don't use Fractalized Reset, you can actually lose your combo gain. Also, because we're going to be swapping back and forth between our primary, melee and secondary weapon quite a lot, I'd actually recommend using Arcane Primary Charger or Arcane Blade Charger, since you can get a kill with your melee weapon to buff out your router, or if you prefer vice versa, getting kills with your router will buff out your melee weapon, which for the Venka is better since you don't have to swap to your melee weapon inevitably in order to get that last 13 times multiplier. So that's everything. Secondary outbursts and the route have a pretty nice little synergy that I just thought I'd highlight. The next video is going to be an addendum to my previous videos, including this one. I got some good recommendations that I'd like to highlight. Just going to go through the Gotva, Atlas, Death Cube, and Zephyr comments and see which ones are good. I imagine that video won't take anywhere near as long as my usual ones, so I'll probably see you soon. Boo, fooled you. Video's not actually over. While I was doing some editing, I found a piece of tech which makes for a very powerful build. So now this video is going to have a Mesa video also stapled onto the back of it. Because... Why not? So it turns out the secondary outburst applies to all secondaries that are equipped while it's active. This goes for your powers as well, such as Peacemaker. So you can give the Regulator's secondary outbursts crit chance and damage buff. By combining Creeping Bullseye, secondary outburst, 5 Red Archon shards, and Cat's Eye from an Ardaza Kavat, you can get 226% critical chance, meaning you're going to be red critting on a pretty convenient basis. So as far as an actual build goes, I've got Steel Fiber and Vitality for your regular armor and health. Then I've got Prime Continuity, which is good for all of her powers, just increases the duration that they can be active and reduces the drain. Then I've got Mesa's Waltz and Rolling Guard, which allows me to roll around while in Peacemaker and get a frame of invulnerability. So if there's a lot of enemies nearby and I need to escape, I can just roll out of there quite easily. Archon Flow is on, because modding for a cold build on your regulators means that it'll proc cold as a power type and therefore cashes in on that 10% energy drop chance, which I then take advantage of with Arcane and Energize, since I have my pet slot taken up by an Ardaza Kavat, so I can't have my death cube on. Then I have Archon Intensify, Hunter Adrenaline and Stretch. The reason I have these on is because I helmet Thoth Ballistic Battery and instead put on Blood Altar from Garuda. This allows me to create a monument which heals in an AoE around it. Stretch increases that AoE. Hunter Adrenaline means I can take damage intentionally in order to get some energy back and then retreat back to the Blood Altar in order to recover that damage. And finally, Archon Intensify because I can take advantage of the plus 30% power strength that you get after healing an ally or Warframe, which I can do with my Blood Altar. For the primary, I've got the Router. Please see earlier in the video when I actually had a focus on what I was doing. For a secondary, I suggest the Vasto. There's only two things I recommend. One, the secondary outburst for reasons stated earlier and to Amalcolm Barrel Diffusion, this is because it increases your rolling speed, and since Rolling Guard starts applying at the beginning of your roll, the quicker you can get out of your rolling animation, the quicker you can get back to firing your regulators. As far as Incarnon Evolutions go on the Vasto, Death Trap Trigger is the only one that's really locked in. This is because, for some reason, Death Trap Trigger applies before mods rather than after. The combination of this high base crit chance with Prime Pistol Gambit, Secondary Outburst, and 5 Red Archon Shards, means that the Vastor's regular fire is going up to 456% critical chance, and the Incarnon form is going up to 509% critical chance. And then if you get the Cat's Eye buff at the same time, that brings it up to 516 and 569 respectively. That's then combined with the 14.4 and the 18 times critical damage multiplier. This turns the Vasto into a great option to quickly swap to if you're encountering an enemy that's taking a long time to take down with your regulators. A melee weapon, you can either go with the Venkuf, as stated earlier in the video, or use Mark of the Beast on a Glaive in order to try and get that additional 120% critical chance buff. For the companion, you've got the Ardaza Kev out with the Cat Eye buff. This gives plus 60% crit chance on top of whatever crit chance you already have. For your regulators, you're going to want to use Creeping Bullseye. It won't really make that much of a difference to your firing speed when you're at full ramp with the regulators anyway, so you might as well use it. 
you'll have your secondary outburst and your 5 Archon shards and that will raise you up to 166% critical chance. This then combined with the Cat Eyes buff will then raise you up to 226% critical chance with a 13.5 times critical multiplier. As far as elements go, I'd suggest modding for Corrosive and Cold, then you can take advantage of Archon Flow and generate those energy orbs. This is actually the end of it now, um, I didn't plan on this bit. Anyway, I'll see you in that hotfix video I was saying about.